period, Apa Via Romania, would like to talk to you about the fact that God loves you with all his heart, talking about the love of God. And we think, what, what is a definition of love? And we could come up with something like love is an incredibly powerful experience and word. The most spectacular, indescribable, deepest relationship possible with someone else is the word love. Love is an unconditional affection with no limits or conditions. Uh, it's a place where you hide nothing of yourself, you are who you are, no mask, uh, no put-ons, just exactly who you are, and then you are accepted in that way, just the way you are, a hundred percent. Love is intense, it is passionate, and without love, your life is incomplete. This one word, love, the experience, the receiving of love helps us overcome the, the weight and the pain of life, gives us worth and, and hope. And that word is love. Now the Bible says God is love. Now it says God is light and some other things, but here it's God is love. It's the very fabric of who he is. He is love in its fullest revelation. The very being of God is unreserved love. From eternity past, God has loved with all his heart and strength. 100%. And that is how the Father loves the Son, the Lord Jesus, and how the Son loves the Spirit, the Godhead. 100% fullness of love between each other. Now the Bible never says that God is power or God is knowledge or God is wisdom. He has those things, but he is more than that. These things probably come under the meaning of love. God is love. Now the only way that God can love is with all his heart. Scripture never says anything less. The Father loves the Son with all his heart. The Spirit loves the Father and the Son in, in the same way, total, unreserved, passionate, deep, total love. And nowhere in the Bible does it say, well, God loves a little bit, or God loves, well, you know, you don't deserve the whole thing, 100%, uh, full octane love, so God only loves you with half of his love, or even three quarters of his love. It never happens, because the only way that God can love is a hundred percent, because that's who he is, and he will always be who he is, and he is one hundred percent love. In the beginning of the Revelation, God reveals, God speaks, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And it speaks about uh, our love uh, for God in, uh, 
Scripture, Romans 5 and 5, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, into us. In other words, God the Spirit, when He comes to indwell within us, He brings with Himself the unmitigated, full octane, passionate, ultimate expression of love. In fact, God even wants us then to, to reflect that love towards others and also to ourselves. Uh, in Matthew it says, you know, thou shalt love thy neighbor. How? Why can't you love yourself? What does that mean? It means you should love yourself. And when you see yourself as God sees you, you will love yourself. In fact, uh, our, our love for others is, 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 is a, you know, the, you're, you're going to love your neighbor just like you love yourself. So the measure, the indescribable, unthinkable measure of how God loves you and me is to me is unthinkable, it's unfathomable. I, I have difficulty wrapping my head around it, but I'm daily accepting it is God loves us. God, the, the Father loves us in the same way that the Father loves His Son. Unthinkable. In other words, as, as the Father loves the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as that love, that indescribable love of God for, the, for His Son, He loves us in the same way, in the same degree, in the same passion, in the same full acceptance. Amazing. And uh, Jesus goes on to say, As the Father hath loved me, so He, Jesus, also loves us. So we have the, the love of the Father, the love of the Spirit is brought to us as the Spirit of God infills us, and we have the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, that God loves us with the same intensity that God the Father loves the Son. And it goes on to explain this immeasurable, unthinkable, unfathomable love of God that Jesus says that the world may know that thou hast loved them. This he's talking about the world the love of God for God so loved the world. And, and, and Jesus is saying that the world should know, needs to know that thou, God, has loved them. How much? As thou hast loved me. Why? Because that's the only way God can love. A hundred percent with all this. Why would he create all those wonderful human beings and send us into the world? world? Because he loves them and he wants them to know that he loves them. Oh, it's, it's beyond comprehension. It's, it's so startling, it's so, so massive. Um, uh, the, the weight of understanding that God loves us as he loves his son. And as uh, the father loves his son, so the son loves us. It makes it hard to believe and hard to receive but nevertheless, it's absolutely 100% gospel verified and true. For both Father and Son, their love for us is compared to the way they, they love each other. And so again, these statements are so big, even seem ungraspable, unrealistic. It's like out of our, the, the, the dimension of our understanding, out of our reach. <clears throat> Though we may not feel the truth of this love, it doesn't lessen the reality of it. Our feelings do not determine 
the truth of the Word of God. And so he is, he is incredibly in love with us. And now he tells us to abide in that love. What does it mean to abide in his love? Well, I, I would think it, it means to, to uh, think about it, meditate on it, um, dwell in it, read scripture, study about it, because his love is eternal in duration. It will never end. And uh, Jeremiah 31.3, it says, The Lord hath appeared unto me, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, because of the love I have for you, with loving kindness or mercy, I have drawn thee. In other words, the love of God is very attractive. It draws people to himself. Now, when we, when we fail, he does not love us less. He cannot. But we experience his love less. Yes, God is grieved at times with some of the things that we do and think and how we behave. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is, is also grieved, much in the way that, you know, a parent who, who loves their teenager sometimes may be grieved by their, their teenager's life and still fully engaged in that love for the son or the daughter. And if we can know our wayward kids, how much more can God do it with us? And so there's a cause and result here uh, because we will only love God to the measure that we see his love for us. Uh, the Bible says we love him, why? Because we understand, parentheses, that he first loved us. So our love for him is based on studying, apprehending, understanding, grasping his love for us. And hereby we know the love of God and looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the more we worship and the more we will understand his love more. And Jesus says, these things I have spoken unto you, what, about the love of God, that your joy might be full, that you might understand that you are not rejected, you are not thrown out, you are not excommunicated, or anything of that, of that nature, but God loves you deeply, passionately, and is, is pouring his love in your direction, so that you'll come home, come back to him. All the dimensions of this love. Paul gives four dimensions of his love. He speaks about the width and the length and the depth and the height. And if we look at each one of these individuals, we talk about the width, that he, 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 he loves for all people. It's all inclusive, all personalities, all uh, tribes and tongues and nations and his, his love is wide enough for total acceptance and inclusion. And the length it speaks of reaching far beyond our failure and the depth of our sin and deprivation. He reaches beyond that. There's a song he said, he reached down his hand for me, and his hand is, should we say, long enough to reach us wherever we may be at the depth. Whatever the depth of our failure, the depth of our sin, the, 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 the depth of our difficult situations, it's included, and the height of his love. 
how highly he has exalted us because he loves us that much. He created us greater than the angels. And the natural man, we naturally uh, feel have shame. We naturally uh, feel rejection. Naturally, we seem to have a, a dull spiritual sensitivity. But our, our emotions are not the authority of the Word of God. We may feel the truth of these, but it does not lessen the reality of our weaknesses and failures and sense of them. And as in life, in the same way, the Father hath loved me, so the Lord Jesus Christ has loved you. And he says, abide there, stay there. Don't let circumstances or difficult things drive you away from the magnificence of his love. Stay focused on his love. Live in it. Go deep in it. Uh, search it out. Uh, talk about it. Pray about it. Press on. Do not be content until you are growing in the knowledge and the experience of this wonderful love of the love of God. And John, in his writing, you see, he, he does an exclamation point. He says, behold, check this out. Look at this wonder, this spectacular thing that the manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us. Amazing. And so the word behold means you know, some of see, observe, view, watch, survey, gaze upon, contemplate, discern, perceive, consider the love of God. When he says, behold, the manner of love of God, he is saying in essence, stand in awe, try to comprehend. He never changes in any of his attributes ever. And thus we never for one moment does God love you less than 100%. He never diminishes in that love. He never grows in that love because he is who he is. And he always was, is, and always will be who he is. And God is love. Jesus will never say, I grew in love in the last million years. Why? Because there's always fullness of the love of God. So abide in that love. Focus on that reality. Never, never more veer from the focus of that truth. Be a student of the love of God. Search the mystery of the love of God. When negative emotions come, give the Word of God more authority than your emotions. Even though it's hard to believe, it's not difficult to believe that God loves believers in heaven. The difficulty is believing that He has a hundred percent love and affection for weak people like me. May I include you and us? Weak people. God revealed the uh, enjoyment of the prodigal son in the Father in giving him his best robes. The newly repentant yet immature prodigal had many areas of his life that still needed transformation, correction, but the father loved that prodigal son and was waiting for him to come home like he's waiting for us to come home. Imperfect though may, we may be, the songwriter says, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches 
to the lowest hell. That guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made where every stalk on earth a quill and every man a tribe by trade, a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless, how strong. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Can you believe it? It shall forevermore endure the saints' and angels' song.